続きまして、分科会4、ワンヘルスの取り組み。A subcommittee for One Health Activities by NPO Organizations. The coordinator who acts as moderator in the session is Ms. Yoko Goto from Freelance Incorporated. Ms. Goto, please. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for coming to participate in this session. I am Goto. I'm from the company called Freelance. The 99%, over 99% of the companies in Japan are small to mid sized. And we actually serve uh, the uh, freelance uh, the people. We actually uh, receive orders from the companies and、um, give that work to freelance people. And I met the concept、uh, One Health. And I have been、uh, supporting、uh, the activities. And that is why I'm being given this big role. And I hope you'll be very nice to me in this session. The topic of this session is that、uh, the private organization and One Health, the One Health advancement and difficulties by civic groups. So, in this session, we would like to talk about the One Health from the perspective of people and citizens. And the speakers in this session have already been active with One Health activities. Let me introduce、uh, the three members. The first speaker、uh, is Shibata san. The Shibata san is a representative director of One Health Creates. Uh, he actually is from the city of Osaka at the time of you know, when he was 27 years old. He came to Fukuoka due to his work. And、uh, at the time of 36 years old, he fell ill and he was told that how long he was, he, I mean, he, he won't be able to live for that long. And I think you'll hear from him directly later on. And he was given an opportunity to think about his own life. At the age of 50,、uh, as his kids reached the 20, he moved to Chikugo City. And、uh, he was assigned to actually、uh, work for the community. And then he set up One Health Creates, and he's a representative director with that organization for One Health activities. The second speaker is. Uh, the Mr. Hiroshi Kanda, Vice Representative Director of Approved Non Profit Corporation, Sento Tarui.、Uh, he was active、uh, um, in supporting、uh, the Africa and then he became involved with the research in agriculture. And in the past few years, he's been working in e b River、uh, Basin and he's been working for. The so called、uh, the community,、uh, the, he actually coined the term called Ompo Society or Community, and you'll hear about that later. The third speaker is、um, the Mr. Kazuhiko Imamura, Executive Managing Director of Fukuoka Veterinary、uh, Medical Association. He studied veterinary medicine from Nihon University and he started working for the prefectural government. And then he went back to university、uh, to do more research. And then he became the head of Chikugo, the agriculture and the forestry AD office. And then、uh, now he is executive managing director of Fukuoka Veterinary Medical Association. And、uh, he's also the, the vice chairman、uh, of the One Health. And he also teaches at some schools. And when it comes to health, One Health, I mean, he is one of the core persons and active persons. There are some subcommittees or breakout sessions in this conference. And in our subcommittee four,、uh, we will hear. From the people who are actually active with One Health activities. I think it's very interesting and informative. And if you become interested to do something, I think you will be able to learn a lot of things from the speakers. So,、uh, Mr. Shibata,、uh, the representative director of One Health Creates, please talk about your activity in your organization. Yes, I'm going to. Thank you very much for your kind introduction. I have to start with a caveat.
We've heard from experts from different world to different fields today. And as has been introduced quite kindly, I have no expertise to speak about. I'm not a professional speaker either. You may find myself being a little bit awkward, so I apologize in advance. Now, as a very ordinary citizen, I will discuss what One Health means to me. Currently, I'm a part of One Health Creates. So let me talk about this organization. What do we do? We plan and operate One Health Festival. Why do we call it a festival? Actually, the name is the reason why I love it. So basic activities is the promotion and communication of One Health. And it is a festival because we want it to attract people's attention and festival certainly is an ideal way of doing so. Last year we held the second, this year we are planning to have the third. So we are the planner and the operator. And also one health car for the communication purposes. Do you see the yellow truck in the background? It's a former kitchen car. It also has a monitor inside where we can show some One Health related video clips. On the right, you see Ohori Koen, a park where we have an international communication section. And our car is parked there. And on the left is a picture from One Health Festival. Governor Hattori is having a conversation with the Fukuoka Prefectural Veterinary Association's presidents. So they're not just ordinary old guys. Now, One Health Education has already been mentioned. So education is a big word, but certainly the formal education can take place at schools. But then there are peripheral areas of work that I enjoy very much. That is enhancing interest among students about One Health. This is at Fukuoka Agricultural High School and they are all freshmen. And I talked to them in a class they liked it very much. I will come back to this later, but they really enjoyed the com company of the dog. Oops, was there a video there? Now, let me talk about why I became interested in One Health. So I'd like to tell you my story of how I, I've come about engaging with One Health. Now, these are the pets of my father. So white dog, you see, and Mina, Parakita, and until his death, my father kept some tropical fish. So in my childhood, there were some animals around me all the time. My deceased father had no brothers or sisters. Now I regret I should have talked about it with him while he was alive, but I'm sure he felt lonely because during the war time, he had to live with his relatives and different relatives 
at different times. And he remembered the animals which were owned and kept by those relatives. My father was particularly fond of this white dog. My father was born in the ear of the dog. He just simply adored the dog. And I do have a story with this dog. When I was not behaving, when I was a child, my father would put me in the kennel, the dog's house. During the summer, it's really hot. And during the winter, it was very cold. But I remember keeping myself warm with the warmth with this dog. Now, after I started working, I sort of enjoyed working from early morning to late at night. And after work, I would go out drinking with colleagues. And certainly, you know, that's a part of your work, right? And I have a family. So weekends and holidays, I spent my time with my family, visiting different places. And of course, while you're working for a company, you go through a periodic physical checkups. And one day I became receiving notice for the re-examination because I had some problems. I ignored them, although I received them a number of years, but then I was not having enough sleep. I was not having a ve very good diet. Actually, I weighed about 108 kilograms at one point in time, because two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning, I would still be eating and drinking. I was accumulating fatigue because of that then. 24 years ago, when I was 36 years of age, I had colorectal cancer. Over the past three years, I was ignoring the signs of colorectal cancer. I was working, I was drinking at the same time and I went through the surgical removal of the cancer clot together with two thirds of abdominal uh, large intestine. Yeah, my family was told I would not live too long. And at that time, doctors were not obliged to tell the patients how long the patients have. So, my mother and my wife were told that I had only 18 months to live. And my mother never wanted to tell me that because she thought I would commit suicide if I knew I had only 18 months to live. So I was told what I had was a benign tumor, which was removed together with the two thirds of the large intestine. So I never thought it was very serious. However, I was hospitalized for the next two and a half months. I wasn't, of course, feeling well after such a major sur surgery. I started thinking about my own life. Then I had this encounter with Relay for Life. Many people who experienced cancer, many of them died a couple of years after they were diagnosed. But I've been doing so for, I've been part of this for the past 20 plus years. So it's a relay. And we walk throughout the night 
to think about the value of life. And eventually we light up the candles on the right, you see the campus of Fukuoka Women's University. And as you can see, many people take part in the relay. I was not able to, I mean, we were not able to work for 24 hours because of COVID-19. But then the governor was a part of it, as you can see in the photo. He never fails to appear on important photos. Anyway, I started about my life. And when I did so, I came to think how important the environment is for me. I have three children. And the youngest one, And 20 when I became 50 years of age. And I told them, now the children have all grown. I wanted to live in the place that I choose to. And my children understood how I felt about it. And they allowed me to do whatever. Then I started looking at some countryside. I was born in a city and I was not accustomed to the countryside lives with rivers and mountains. And then Chikugo City was soliciting for applications for community building supporters. So I decided to apply for that. And they formed a group of volunteers from different places. But actually, what they wanted was younger people who may come to Chikugo City and decide to live and marry and have children there. A very tactical move by this local municipal, municipality. But then, I was not fit for the purpose when it comes to that. But then they still welcomed me because the ultimate purpose was community building. I was extremely welcomed, as a matter of fact, to be a part of the group. There is a term of three years. And I served six years. And in this place, which is totally unknown to me, the second chapter of my life started. I came in touch with nature and I realized the importance of good water. And there is a water fountain Water contains gas, and if you cook rice with it, you get really beautiful rice. You can, of course, drink that water. Very good for your intestines as well as, in, for example, you get very good bowel movement. So I realized that water was a perfect fit for me. There is a park called Nakanoshima Park, and there is this massive tree which has lived hundreds of years. Recently, you hear a lot about minus ions from your home appliances. Hard to believe but because it's invisible. But then in early mornings, when I go to that park, it's so interesting to see, for example, the newly born uh, chikadas and massive trees. And I felt really good. So that was the first contact. 
with what is called the forest bathing. Now, someone from the neighboring city introduced me to these animals and that encounter led me to start thinking about one hill. Cats and the dog. The dog is shepherd. When I met these cats, they were really, really small. A friend of mine contacted me through social media, Facebook, Instagram, there are so many types of social media. And I was kind of good at it. And this friend of mine wanted me to post the photos of those tiny, tiny kittens to look for someone who want to adopt them. I put these two up and I really felt they were so lovely. When I was a child, we had a dog, but we never had cats. But the warmth of animals was very different from the warmth of a rug doll. Well, I asked him what will happen to them if they were not adopted. If you're not taking them, if they cannot find foster parents, these kittens will be killed in gas chamber. Or it's impossible to let that happen. So I adopted them myself on that spot. Now, the shepherd is a former police dog. Within his canine unit, however, he was not very good compared to his buddies. And once again, he was put to a risk of his life. I could not let that happen to him either, but this dog was already pretty big. So I asked a friend of mine to drive this dog in his truck to my place. And these are Mamishiva species of a dog. This one's called Punch. That was the very first kind of species of the dog, which we kept when I, since I was a child. And he was a sort of a leftover at a pet shop. There were three of them and one of them was left behind. I asked why. It seems like this dog has some mental problems, but I didn't see that that well. And I asked the breeder what will happen to him. And once again, I was told if I didn't adopt him, he will also be killed. I could not let that happen. So, when I adopted him, one day I found another dog with him. I wondered whether he cloned himself. But then that was a stray dog, which came to the smell of my dog's food. So when I adopted them, I took them to a vet for health checkups. In the waiting space, I was shown the video of dogs waiting to be terminated. So, such experience led me to think seriously about Wang Health. 
in order for me to be happy, those dogs and other animals have to be happy. So I decided to launch One Health Creates. I've been talking about my engagement with One Health. I started off by community building supporters group. I also work as a social worker to take care of those who have the criminal backgrounds to come back to the society. I also help people in their wellness building as a former cancer survivor. I'm not an expert, like I said earlier, so I don't know what works in what way, but when it comes to One Health, you have to protect everything, people, animals, and if any part of that crumbles, it'll be the end of everything. For example, I walk my dogs every morning, every evening, and there are places which make these three dogs sick. Around Okimachi Township, after wheat, they grow rice and they grow different things every six months. And after that, they use herbicides to weed the field before they plant something new. And this, that can get my dogs sick after licking those places. So I have to rush my dogs to vets. And that made me think, this shouldn't be happening because what is bad for dogs can be also harmful to human beings. Recently, since it happens so often, I learned how to take care of the sick dogs using lactobacillus. Anyway, I think it's important to, for example, set up a fence so that dogs would not get closer to the places where herbicides were sprayed. The other day I visited high school and gave lecture and one of this student told me he was so impressed. You said animal, people, environment are one. In that context, we have lost many animals and plants in the world, and humans are only ones which can kill themselves. When it comes to dogs and cats, they're terminated, they're killed without them wanting it, and human beings alone can kill themselves. And not only that, human beings can kill. Animals can kill plants. What a sinful being human beings are. Maybe wise, but cruel. And from such perspectives, I look for opportunities to learn about it more. And then the Disaster Relief Center for Animals is something that I was introduced to from the Veterinarian Association. Now, the shepherd I was talking about was brought there and he feels immediately better even if he is sick. Somehow, there is antidote existing in this grass so dogs would eat snow and they would not get sick. So there should be something in the nature that works miracles like that. Now, this dog is being washed by spring water, a spa water, and elementary school pupils are washing the dog. Actually, I did not ask them to do do so. 
when I told them I was taking this dog to a spa to give him a bath, these children wanted to do that because they had not experienced that in the past. So this type of a facility can become a part or the core part of One Health activities, which I continue to work on even to this date. So today I shared with you my story of myself and my engagement with One Health, with the organization called One Health Creates. Shibata-san, thank you very much. That was Mr. Yoshimitsu Shibata from One Health Creates. Mr. Kanda, representing NPO Senkyo Tarui, to talk about the Sustainable Recycling Society. I am from Kyoto. In Kyoto, I am from the suburbs in Kyoto. So my grandfather was specialized as a farmer and the bamboo. So, uh, when I was doing the research in Southeast Asia, my colleague in Southeast Asia says that in the 90, 90s, Japanese companies are purchasing the low priced agriculture product from Southeast Asia. What happens to the farmers? Agriculture, forest, fishery in Japan, they ask this question. So, Abroad, there is the international cooperation under which name I was engaged in the activities. So there are a lot of problems in Japan. So about 23 years ago, in the basin of Ibi River in Gif Prefecture, I started my activity. So Gif Prefecture, you cannot tell where we are in the map. Next to Sekihara, if I say this, Osaka, people might consider this as a Shiga, but it is on the border of Shiga and Gifu. In the east of Segihara, this is a Tarui town. In the middle of Kyoto and Nagoya, it's closer, closer to Nagoya. So it's closer to Kansai region. I am a specialist in agriculture in water rather, so I am quite fond of water. So this town is a rich water, and also they have fountains and mambo. If you go to Iran, not colors in Afghanistan, in the Japanese version, mambo, we have more than eight, 100 sites when I start to live. So that is the horizontally hold uh water so 16 years ago npo organization started in the middle of the town because i have experienced kyoto then i was asked to prepare documents so i was asked to buy the uh, senior citizens to make this i was asked to represent the office i was asked to work as a representative director i said this it's difficult to have funding activity so it causes a problem, but I was asked to work as a representative director, but we have a, the money is tight. So elderly people have left the association. So about 10 years ago, fair trade activity was started as a project. The younger people take an interest in here and started to be involved. Fair trade shops are being held. At, this is also NPO office. So fair trade SDG is a buzzword. This is quite persuasive to the people. The SED nonprofit consulting is another project. Advocacy, this is not too familiar wording in Japan. In the afternoon session, WHO person has said this several times. One Health policy is to be advocated by WHO. She has referred to this under the advocacy. So to make advocacy over the policies. This is Adobo Advocacy School, where we talk, learn about advocacy. JICA from this year, along with the JICA, we have started a project to develop human resources for international cooperation in the basin of Ibigawa. 
if I talk on and on, I it's time consuming. So in two years time, in the basin area, Bay River, the project will be started. So we have uh, taken care of these collaborations. So it's a small scale energy NPO we are. So we are promoting the town building efforts in Tarui with a high level of well-being and happiness. One health, this really matches with the One Health concept and approach. And in one uh, town alone, the town or community issues are not confined to this place. So in relation to the future issues and challenges, we have to have a longer perspective and we have to learn from the past. And we have a Mino Ichinomiya uh, located in here. We have accumulated, we have accumulation of history where we have, we can learn a lot. So I'm from Kyoto. So Kyoto, you learn a lot and you have a longer history behind. I was proud of this, but 1,200 years ago, Kyoto was a capital, but 1,300 years ago, Tarui was a capital. So this has a longer history behind. The st after I started living here, and when I was wandering around in South Asia, I was around Asia monsoon season, monsoon area is a basin based. It could be in India, Philippines, or Thailand, Japan. It's the same. Rich forest existing in the upstream and the rice bodies and fields in the midstream and the uh, fishing ground in the downstream. So we have to integrate them all in one way. This is what I've learned. And there are few, so we have to make towns by each individual citizen working as a main character. So we are making city efforts against this background. Sort of thinking about the community by the basin or by the unit of basin. Originally, going backward to the history, any region, 70 to 100 years ago behind, then there is a recycling society by the unit of basin being deployed. But for the past 100 years or so, this has been destroyed. Keyword is the ship transportation. In, you have a river, Yabe River in so forth in Fukuoka. It has a longer history, which has generated a rich society to preserve the environment. You have a longer history behind. In the basin of E.B. River, this is a very interesting place. And by way of agriculture forestry products, you know the relationship with the abroad. Since the last year, we have a wood shock that we experienced. The, there is a rapid increase in the prices of the woods and timbers and the gift prefecture, as it was mentioned yesterday, on the he goes on the east side and the west side is the gift prefecture. Yeah. So this is the famous place for the cipher, but here they cannot produce a large amount of cedar trees. So the prices of other species of woods are going up, but we experience the other way around. So it's easy for us to see the connectedness, connectedness with the abroad. So environmental issues in the world and the, and the poverty issues and the no-south issues that are upon us. So you have to think about the agriculture, forest, fisheries issues. So this connects us to all sorts of SDG issues. It's easy to understand. But as was mentioned by Shibata-san, he has no experience of the rice paddies and fields. Yes, we go through the training with the university students and the co-ed from Osaka says, what is the rice paddy? Looking at the forest, it's same, the trees that are planted, they don't take interest in what is being planted in the environment. For about one week, they stay in the community, take them to the mountain, go into the fields, around to the paddies. Then surprising enough, 10 years ago, they come came over to go through the uh, training, but now she has moved herself to the mountain, to the deep in the mountain. She was grown in Osaka. She had nothing, nothing to do with the rice paddy, but now she has a different life up in the mountain. So we built the, uh, the recycling society by the unit of basin. This is what I call the Ompo society. There is a sustainable society 
that is calm and rich as a society. So, so this is a society filled with the calmness and richness. So there is a high affinity with the promotion of one house. So by learning from one house, it is instrumental for us to think in the betterment of Onpo society back in our region. The NPO activities I would like to introduce to you. So to learn about the basin, that's one aspect. So now, about 70 years ago, the circulation or recycling activity in the basins, which was perished 70 years ago, when I tell this story to the students in high school and university, they have no idea. So we have started the efforts to make the basin for the implementation of ESD in the basin of Ibi River. We make teaching materials, we have eight sites, so that we provide the senior high school students with the basin tour. And these high school students would guide the primary school students for the touring of the session. So in a homepage, this is quite de described in detail. There are eight sites in the basin. So the senior high school students are taking over for one day, one, one night, two days tour program. They make a tour, it's a very hectic tour. They make a round and then learning from this. The, the village mayor had given us, given the explanation to them in the, the upstream area and the Indian SDGs workshop was held. They try to analyze where they have went, they have gone through. Then these senior high school students next year had to guide the primary school pupils because rather than ask the adults, give the guide, give the guidance to them, because it's done by high school students, they are so honest in giving a good explanation, thinking about a quiz, so that they make it a fun for the pupils using the leaves and sofas. So if they give to the right answer, then the high school students give them the nice premium. So the village in the upstream and the headstream, uh, they are inviting guests in the workshop along with the elderly. So this is something that is quite new. It's rare. We also looking into the manners and rituals of the community, especially the related to agriculture, forestry, fisheries. You have to make the use of the resources. They are not specified in the paper how to make use of uh, uh, the sources and the uh, so forth, resources and so forth. It's not clearly set forth in the documents unless you know this. It's difficult to preserve and maintain what's been available in the community because of the aging society, because of the depopulation and so forth. You develop some pamphlets and leaflets to learn about the rituals and manners. And because I was not too good, so it was not good for me there, then in overseas area. So this is really deep rooted in these communities. I have a lost sight of that point. I make blend, I made blunders then and there. So once again with JICA, I am also doing this project because to learn, I like to learn how to learn the procedures and rituals in the community so that you can make the use of them no matter where you go in other countries. So this is done, we have, uh, we have done this at the end. We have invited them to have a dialogue with the community people. And also we, the other project is to support the livelihood of the community. So by being together, there are lots that we have learned so at the old house. Once by one season, we have a small uh, uh, gathering of a Mizunova city. 100 people come over in this small, uh, in this old house. So uh, 10 shops are uh, put in their stalls there. And then to these uh, people running the business, it will upgrade their name and they, it will increase their market value so that they start and they can really establish the stores on their own. So they move from the towns, they want to start living in the villages. There are a lot of young people with this aspiration, but it doesn't last. So on a steady basis, slowly but surely, 
it's not lofty idea. We listen to their problems. Steady but surely, we give them advices. Fair trade, taru, fair trade day, tarui, is a concretization of this effort. We have done this for 10 years. Now 10,000 people visit us. Many small stalls gather, as was mentioned by Shibata-san. This is like a festival. We have a live show. Many things have been repeated on and on from this time, from 10th round, to the merger with the welfare. So fair trade is for us to collect with the poverty stricken people in our approach. So in Japan, we have a, a problem to people in, in Japan. So with the welfare association and also with the welfare society people, we are doing this and we are pouring our attention. And also, we like we are now doing the uh, project to support the community people in the uh, shrine. We have refurbished the old house to make it a lodging facility. And here, in the middle, the shrine in the middle of the forest, this is the base for the forest bathing. Originally, the, my friend who have returned from France has come up with this idea, so we have supported this. So the, a lot of people have come over from France. In actuality, a few years ago, they just take, took a stroll in between the fields, and they, they, if they find the wild plant, they are happy. And if the old ladies are working on the sides of the fields, they are so happy. But because of the COVID-19 pandemic, these people that cannot come. But this is you now we becoming more and more famous, mouth to mouth. So a lot of people from Japan are now contacting us, and they say that they want to stay. On the right hand side is in the agriculture area, children do not have many opportunities to play in the middle of the forest. When at the time of the father and the grandfather's era, it, it's done, but the children do not have the chances. So we like to, we have established the kindergarten in the forest in the Torigawa town, which is a neighbor town for us. So this is where we are pursuing. I have not covered from A to Z in our project. So the promotion of One Health, maybe like One Health promotion education or, and the community. can be divided like uh, the units by by basin. And so we need the people. So with these people, how do we, we achieve the connection? We are doing this and put it in practice in the basin of Ibi River. As long as I live, such onboard society, sustainable society cannot be uh, built in entirety. But this is the image that we like to prepare ourselves as a guideline so that I hope that a society can be shifted to the direction. I think it's a wonderful thing indeed. So one, th so it will lead us to the promotion of One Health idea. So with the Fukuoka, who are the pioneering example, we'd like to learn from you, and I'd like to pursue this project of ours in the days ahead. And this completes my brief presentation. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Kanda-san. It was a presentation by Mr. Hiroshi Kanda, Vice Representative Director and approved non profit corporation, Sento Tarui. And now I'd like to invite Dr. Kazuhiko Imamura, Executive Managing Director of Fukuoka Veterinary Medical Association. Um, Dr. Imamura, please. Yes, good afternoon. I am from Fukuoka Veterinary Medical Association. My name is Imamura. Thank you very much, Ms. Goto, uh, to kindly introduce myself. And in fact, together with Shibata-san and Kanda-san, we had a small um, the meeting, and I saw their slides in advance and created on my own. And based on two of their talk, I was thinking how I should structure my talk. Um, they missed a uh, Shibata.
talked based on his personal experience, and uh, Mr. Kanda talked about community activities and all the activities that he actually was involved and organized are now leading to One Health. So what I want to do is perhaps to talk more, um, not really a specific manner. I mean, I'd like to um, really talk about what community, I mean, what we need to promote One Health. I believe we need a community to promote One Health. As this slide says, so if you actually consider backwards, One Health actually foster community. I think that perspective is also possible. And since yesterday, uh, we have been hearing there are six pillars under One Health, uh, such as these. And today, because I represent a veterinary medical association, I'd like to talk about infectious diseases. And when we hear infections, of course, we immediately think of COVID-19. But let's change perspective a little bit and talk about a hunter virus infection. This is um, actually a zoonotic disease, primary reservoir, are rodents. And for human in Eurasian uh, continent in Asia, it is actually a kidney disease. In Americas, it is mainly pulmonary uh, the disease. The electronic, uh, the uh, the the picture uh, of the virus is sin nombre virus, 100 nanometer uh, diameter. It's RNA virus, uh, one over 10,000 uh, millimeter. So it's very small. So it's a, a electronic microscopic picture. And with human, it seems like it was a outbreak a number of times. What's well known to Japan is that when Imperial Japanese Army advanced to China in uh, the eastern north, 10,000 people got infected and 1,000 died. Mortality then was 10%. In Japan, in 1960, in the city of Osaka, there was a small outbreak. More than anything, the hunter virus became very well known because in 1993, in the southwest of the United States, the life-threatening pulmonary disease outbreak happened. Deer mice uh, was actually a vector. That disease infected mice are asymptomatic, completely asymptomatic, no symptom at all. In a feces and a urine of infected mice, there are viruses. When infest, inf uh, I'm sorry, the, the feces and the urine got dried up, then uh, people may be in contact with that. And there is no infection, uh, transmission from human to human. In 1993, in the United States, in uh, the Southwest, there are region called Four Corners. The pulmonary disease occurred with unknown cause. The investigation got conducted and they found hunter virus was the cause as that electronic uh, the picture showed, the microscopic picture showed. So why there was such an outbreak? The big reason is that the population of mice increased. So that was the main reason. And one of the four corners in a city of, I'm sorry, the state of New Mexico, if we think of before 1993, there was drought in seven years in Laurel. And then there was environmental change and there were lots of rain. So there were um, in the beginning, a decrease of uh, mice number. 
and there are lots of rains and then there are lots of pine nuts grown because of lots of rain and there are lots of grasshoppers and that actually increased the mice population and then there are more opportunities for human and mice came in contact so the reservoir or vector is mice and the route of transmission the above is uh, the virus and what it says with 10 millimeter is feces of all the deer mice there are lots of virus found in feces like this and for some reason uh, the the human became in contact and that's why uh, the human became host what is often said is that this sort of uh, the infectious diseases in order to control the vector and the route of transmission and host need to be well controlled and it has to be shut down to prevent and that is a textbook like explanation but if you take a look at the picture below this is not a picture from the us it's a picture taken in japan countryside and in fact the mice exist in an environment like this and as the right hand side of the photo shows there, there are areas uh, that we human live and that relations are very important and that's why we need to have more specific measures uh, for each potential cause so we've been talking about the zoonotic uh, disease increase and there are eight factors why uh, zoonosis are increasing uh, number one the movement of goods and people changed due to globalization and with advancement of of the airplanes and at such a speed uh, the human and goods can actually move around and number two uh, the demand for livestock products increased and number three unsustainable but agricultural in increased so agricultural products were produced in a wide the field and that was not sustainable and the capture of wild animals and i think this is about bushmeat demand increase and in japan i know that there are some people for that idea that uh, the the dba the, the deer meat um if you actually cook that is okay but if you like to eat uncooked um that could actually cause uh, disease and also uh, the usage of natural resource which is unsustainable and urbanization and change of land use and now these days uh, people move into the areas where in history people didn't live and also food supply chain changed it's not uh, the local uh, production for local consumption but food come from different places and uh, there could be a viruses and bacteria, and more than anything climate change at the time of hunter virus if there are any sort of climate change that could lead to uh, the outbreak of infectious disease and in fact in back in 2007 in march the environmental ministry issued this brochure titled global warming and infectious diseases it's a good brochure it's easy to read if you're interested you can download it uh, the, in pdf format from uh, the ministry's website so with this let's again talk about one health so all of you who are here today and 
viewing this uh, with uh, internet, you know the concept of One Health. The health of human, animals, and environments are closely connected and strongly affect uh, with each other. So that's why uh, we have this conference. And now we are in the midst of uh, this COVID-19 pandemic, and that's why One Health is receiving attention. A lot of times we hear this question, with One Health, can we prevent COVID-19? Is it possible? Very often I'm presented with such question. Dr. Kurauchi yesterday, the head of uh, the JVMA said in his greeting that in long-term uh, One Health uh, can actually be the solution uh, for COVID-19, but it would not be uh, the symptomatic uh, treatment. So in a previous session, we heard a speaker who is OT and talked about disaster. So if I may use analogy of disaster and damage, And typically, there are three types of disasters. Meteorological disasters, such as typhoon, heavy rain, drought. Geological disasters, such as earthquakes and tsunami. And these days, biological disaster, such as uh, the, uh, the, the damage by grasshoppers or infectious diseases. So there are three types of uh, disasters. But let's set aside uh, like the damage by insects and the, the crops. But disasters are very difficult to eliminate. Think about typhoon, think about earthquakes, think about infectious diseases. We, we cannot eradicate or eliminate them. The, you may think, I mean, it, it was said uh, that uh, the infectious, we didn't have infectious diseases anymore, uh, but with COVID-19, we are reminded that infectious diseases will never go away. So disaster won't go away, uh, but if we are well prepared, we can minimize uh, that damage, especially when it comes to natural disaster, uh, such as meteorological and geological disasters, there are lots of educational activities, each family uh, or household and uh, the governments are preparing for in case of disaster. But then there are disaster victims. So I don't want to be rude, but I think still uh, we can gradually minimize uh, the damage if we prepare better. The same thing can be said on biological uh, disasters, but what sort of preparedness we're talking about? And I think that is One Health. And before I talk more in details, as I said earlier, the meteorological or geological disasters, the household individuals, uh, the uh, local governments, and communities are well prepared. And when it comes to biological uh, disasters or AMR bacteria, the same level of preparedness is important in individuals, household, community, local governments, experts, and global state. If we have good preparedness against biological disaster, um, there is a good preventative effect against infectious disease outbreak. For instance, uh, this sort of opportunity that uh, the local people participate and education on education or study meetings and practice a local um, production for local consumption, environmental protection. Out of eight factors to increase uh, the zoonotic diseases, 
on what's indicated in yellow, at least in long term or mid to long term, we can reduce the level of risk. Here is the same uh, slide that I shared earlier on. So where this mechanism in, uh, infectious diseases occur, but for instance, the mice, the vector, the control can be handled by veterinarian or biologist. For host side, for human, medical doctors provides care. Those will be the main thing that we do and the route of transmission. And in terms of how to shut out uh, the route or the community and local governments, the governments play a role. I mean, we veterinarian should play a role as well. At the same time, on environment and the community, the community needs to play a role so that we can actually stop the flow, which is indicated in, in orange arrow. To prepare for potential uh, the biological disaster, we need a the community work, um, which is not just transient. While health is not uh, to prepare against uh, the infectious disease, Zoonotic disease, uh, diseases, AMR, yes, but number three, environmental conservation, we need to work for that. And creating symbiotic society, human and animals, yes, we need to work for that. And health promotion and creating good relations between human animals and environments. This is not just the work of experts. This is not just the activities that we do at schools community uh, needs to be very active. Uh, we need uh, that activity should actually continue and active. So this is one health activity. In the middle, there is one health boy and there are balloons, the six pillars. If you put them into the pot and mix them well, um, I came up with these six, oh, I'm sorry, four balloons. And I think as the right hand side balloon says, community making is indispensable. And this community making promotes One Health. I mean, community creation itself is not One Health. There are two ways. I think One Health also can help community to be built. This is my final of the slide. The prefecture and veterinary association work together to create a booklet. And this is the final page. The planet that we live have been handed over from our ancestors. It is also something that we need to pass on to our children and grandchildren. We need to ensure to pass healthy globe and natural environment to next generation. And that is our responsibility. And those in yellow, um, we can actually replace uh, these to community. So that's why Mr. Shibata, Mr. Uh, the Kanda, these activities. If you remember, are uh, important activities for One Health. Uh, with this, I'd like to uh, conclude my first presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Imamura. Thank you very much indeed for presentations for three panelists whom I would like to call upon to come up to the stage so that we can have some casual talk amongst with amongst each other.
はい、えー、それではですねまず私の方からあの三名の皆様にですね。I had enjoyed conversing with you before we even start this. And Shibata san, you told me about how you came about owning those dogs. And I really,、uh, your story really resonated myself as well. And one of the things you did was to go to a high school to give one health lectures. And you brought a shepherd to the school. Shepherd is a big dog. Isn't the dog afraid of a bunch of school children or students, or are the students afraid of the dog? Well, thank you for the question. I was afraid of the shepherd at first. I had never. A big dog like that. No. It took me a courage to adopt him. I was afraid that he might bite me because this dog was massive. But then I was shown a video clip. Of how he was, or rather, I, I was shown how he had been、uh, trained. And certainly, the police trainers use artificial arm for the dog to bite and never let go. When a dog is put into that kind of an environment, he adapts. To that environment. So, when I take those dogs, three of them, to high schools, it takes time, it takes efforts, and I have to go early in the morning into those schools. It's a lot of work. I was afraid what happened. Those dogs start biting. Uh, those teachers or students. But then it was easy for the dogs to get accustomed to the bunch of students. And one of the female students said she had some allergy. Although she loved animals, actually, believe it or not, I had allergy to animals. I became allergic to all the animals because of my fear of a horse one day. But then I began living with cats and dogs, and somehow my allergy has been cured. So I talked about that, and somehow students really loved. Having those dogs, and dogs do understand the situation they're put in, and they would behave accordingly. I can assure you that. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. And certainly, students may not be owners of their own pets. It's seldom、um, occasion that they meet a large dog like a shepherd. Thank you. Oh, by the way, when you speak, you can. Take your mask off. Kanta san, I'd like to ask you a question. In Gifu Prefecture, you've been involved in various activities. One thing I was thinking as I was listening to you now, Fukuoka has been at the front line of One Health, and somehow Kanta san, that captured your attention. And you were starting your activities at Ibigawa River in Gifu. Why did you think your Onpo society building leads to One Health? What are the commonalities between the two? Right, there are six pillars of One Health, as you have heard a number of times today. 
four pillars out of those have been implemented, like environmental protection, symbiotic society between humans and animals. And we're often talking about the diminishing forests as buffers and deers, wild boars, monkeys, bears, they come to human habitats because there is a dimin diminishing buffer zone in forests. I still hear those wild animals in where I live. I don't really know whether that's good or bad, but for example, deers come to the vicinity of our NPO office. So how do we rebuild the buffer forest? Actually, in the past, there were buffer forests uh, where people would collect uh, birches and branches for fire in the past, and that worked as a buffer, and we are losing it. Fair trade, locally produced and consumed, reduced use of additives, the reduced use of agricultural chemicals for healthier intake for human beings, and building good relationship between people, animals, and the environment. Now, yesterday we heard from Professor Lee, and today we heard from Dr. Liz Taylor of WHO. That would have been very interesting. I was here in the room. If I had listened to her at home, I might have fallen asleep, but I was listening to her very intently. And the common infectious countermeasure for both humans and animals is not something that I can easily achieve. And as Professor Imamura mentioned earlier, the relationship between host and animals have to be really important and the buffer forest can be a part of the solution. AMR can be a scientific field, but it is related to agriculture and livestock farming. How to alleviate them from antimicrobials? Well, that boils also down to nurturing and valuing the community that you live in. So I can go back to Gifu and proudly declare myself as a One Health promoter now with that understanding. Thank you. Kanda-san, I was listening to you and thinking that you are building the community anew based on the existing manners and rituals of that community rather than importing and borrowing what is being done elsewhere. So unique approach for unique localities must be necessary. Now, Dr. Imamura, in order to get community people to be a part of lung health activities, what can we do? I'm sure we attracted attention of many people who are now interested in, in being a part of lung health. What can we do? Right, when it comes to taking part, as Kanda-san mentioned earlier, when it comes to infectious diseases or AMRs, bacteria or viruses, and those are the scientifically difficult areas and certainly experts' approaches must be called for. On the other hand, infectious diseases and AMR being a part of lung health, and that concept has to be communicated to the general public. And there are two specific approaches that you may be able to take. For one thing, as Professor Lee mentioned yesterday, forest and people, the relationship between the two, the relationship between people and plants must be a part of important learning. And the second approach is, as Toshimitsu-san mentioned, animals and people including animal therapy, wild animals. Such relationship should be taught and learned. So what is important here is that from forest, we humans 
are benefited and from animals we get livened that's true it's important that we convey this message that's all there is to it reversity people should take care of them nicely so the forest and animals can live and grow in the sound manner so mutual relationship is to be learned since of, since your childhood you have to learn in togetherness that is a part of education and social enlightenment activities and to you have to program an event to convey this message so that the administration people and people representing the healthcare organization and mass media you're participating as a part and parcel of this program to proceed with the one health approach people are not living by themselves along with the plants animals we are living together so that mutually complementary we are benefiting from the value and virtues this can this message convey can convey thank you i might sound abstract today with the three people's talk especially shibata-san kanda-san had uh, given us the specific examples of community activities and dr imamura especially one health the, the the academic cooperation between the v jvma and the vm the WMA. so we have to think together so that's a starting point as was mentioned by kanda-san so the ministry of uh, agriculture and forestry and fisheries people are get together so that Fukuoka, there will be a thrust of the movement from Fukuoka. I have learned this message. Now time is almost up, but we have a few more minutes to go. He says this is a good opportunity for three of you. After that, having listened to the three of you talk, so that we like to have a round discussion that if you'd like to dig into further to two of the other speakers, co-speakers, anybody wishes to learn more about the things that I was mentioned by co-speakers? Yes, thank you very much, Kanda-san. I'd like to ask you a question to Madam san for two days. Their efforts of Kokara have been developed upon us. It's wonderful, you have audience, and in short period of time, you're a spearhead in this. It's amazing. Imamura-san, it should be keeping pretty busy, I'm sure. But today, once again, the safety of the food and the approach to the agriculture were discussed by listening to these talks. The way the civic organizations, we are responsible for the soft part, software part, but the health center and the, uh, the base making are the hardware aspects by the administration. So how do you? deploy this in a more extensive way, especially to veterinary association. Thank you very much for your question. It may, I might sound more ordinary, but one health, six point, six pillar of one health approach. There is the environment, the people and the animal, how to enjoy the better relationship, the specific keywords is based is about the locally produced locally uh, consumed and sustainability of our local agriculture forestry fishery industries and so the manual and the water circulation and recycling and so forth they are all inclusive so global against this globalization with the kind of sound for the past 30 years we keep discussing the things in the context of globalization you cannot come up with a solution all based upon the locally produced locally consumed practice but now locally produced locally consumed approach it's a time that we are in to think about more seriously about this not just ideologically unless you do this our health my health can be jeopardized there is a danger for this potentially. We are at this time and age, at this domain. So therefore, I respect Ms. Dr. Weda said that we have to live 
in active manner. As was mentioned by Kandisan, and uh, the locally produced and the community center got closed in joining the commonness and richness in a sustainable society. I think that's important. Thank you very much. Curiosity, Shibata san, Imamura san, do you have any question? I'd like to ask you a question to Kanda san, if I may. In my presentation, I mentioned that the education for the high school, I mean, be responsible for the education with the high school. And uh, I have done this two times. Maybe the imp my interpretation is right. On the whole, I should say, in Gif Prefecture, this has been done. The, looking at the responses by students, maybe this question might come up in the quiz. It's not, but they said that their responses are rather centric on centered on the questions and quizzes. They can study for the sake of the scores, but when it comes to the applicability or application, there is a lack of study method. I feel it so keenly through and through. So against this background, it's not the responsibility that students are not to blame. So in Fukuoka Prefecture administration, I think sure they give a hope to this. All of a sudden, one health education, if this is in front of it, they are not receptive to this. Reversely, Kanda-san, when you are mingling with the students, the high school students teaching or guiding the primary school pupils. It's a basic principle. I really envy you this support on this approach. What is the starting point? Could you give us a hint? I just do it roughly, don't, no guidance or no directions. That's my approach. Based upon our experiences, in a fair, we have done the fair trade days for 10 times. In the past immediate five times, they are done by the volunteer students. 150 people came over as volunteers. In the town of with 27,000 people, then 150 people come. And in Fukuoka City, that is 10, in, it is in case of Fukuoka City, this is tantamount to 10,000 volunteers. Why do they come? Because they think it's fun. And fair trade and SD are the killer contents. So the tools that are young people, this is a buzzword that they take interest in. They learned it from uh, first year and the middle school. It has nothing to do with the examination for entrance examination. So they come over, they are intense. They are bewildered because I, we don't give the objections, but they think about it and they are engaged in this for two days. Of course, once in a while we give, the, we give some wording and encouragement and so forth, but we are cherishing or thinking that the uh, spontaneity is very important. Some people say that it was too hectic. They said they are so much fatigued. So on the very day of our session, they get fainted and so forth. But if you are framed, they are also within the domain of our instruction. So for they have to go beyond this box. So it's different from the school education, scene of school education. So this sort of experience can be introduced in the school curriculum, school environment. So I was given an offer from a junior high school. So for maybe uh, the students, they said that from the school, that we have to invite the senior school students who would take a volunteer action in developing the program for the uh, fair trade day in Tarui. Uh, so this is something op as an opportunity that we'd like to provide. May I poke my nose? To be honest, at the bottom line, I'm not good at compliment. I know one health classes before giving this to students. I think it's to be done by the, uh, the people of the Board of Education because they are framing their people. I think so. With the one health education, I think they are giving us sort of implicit nuances, but if you go to the site, it's different. The students' approaches are different, the responses are different. So, Kanda-san, what you said, you 
I think you have to give share this thought to ESRA people in the prefecture of Board of Education. I'm sure that people from Board of Education might be listening to us. So unless you do this, one health education is not feasible, cannot make a progress. What do you say, Mr. Kondo? In a small town with a tower town with a population of 27,000. So we have we have visited the, uh, the director of board of education also to have a gradient from the principal of uh, junior high school and senior highs and so forth. So I'm for, quite fortunately, the head of the board of education is an advisor for us. So the, the head of the ministry of the, the board of education is working with us. There are a lot of uh, officers in here, but if you have a staging process in the behind, then we feel safe. I did not know this. So we are not good at uh, doing the staging works. Now, Mr. Dr. Imamura, in a previous briefing session, we had to finish at 4.20 by all means. It's a mission. Uh, we're getting heated. So I think today and yesterday, I felt this one health approach, we have to have this banner under which we are gathered. Then the health, the specialist, the administration, media people, the specialists from healthcare organizations, beyond their boundaries, professional boundaries, they get together and we have various types of discussions. For example, in the Veterinary Medicine Association gathering, this is something that we be uh, go beyond the profession domain, like uh, JVMA association. As was mentioned by Shibata-san, such administration, the rigidity of uh, administration, whether for better or worse, but this rigidity can be softened by one health approach so that everybody gets together. So administration people might participate so that this rigidity can be softened this effectiveness is exist is available in one house. It's applicable to JMA or excuse me, uh, Medical Association and the Veterinary Medical Association. So that's the spirit of one house so that you can sustain the community in the end. That's what I think. Thank you very much. So Dr. Imamura is now in the position of connecting between public and private sectors. I'm sure Shibata-san has given us a very sharp point. Now today, advancing and the agonizing One Health, we have a spirit, uh, mental things, and also there are a lot of aspirations that we aspire, spearhead in the future. That is an aspect from the uh, NGOs. Now we have five more minutes to go. Now, uh, may I ask all of you to give us a comment? It's a, it'll be a final comment, one by one. Mr. Shibata, please. Well, as Dr. Imamura just mentioned, I think it was very good to have forum like this. I think I should intentionally be an outspoken person, and that's why I'm very open. And by having forum that, like this, I think it'll be really good that we can head towards um, better direction, medical doctors, veterinarians, and the citizens like me. Hopefully there will be more for, uh, for all of us to exchange our views. And next time, hopefully will be the third time or fourth, fourth time. Well, the third forum, I think we should invite animals we want to hear from animals. I'm sure they may, they will definitely say meow or vow. I mean, because of COVID-19, we were not able to invite anyone uh, in person, but it'll be really good if the animals can also come. I think this forum is a very good effort. Thank you. At the time of uh, the disaster in Kyushu, and uh, I hope that, uh, yeah, there was an animal rescue center you talked about, and I hope a lot of people will have chance to visit that. Well, One Health will be the, the keyword uh, in a post-SDGs. 
the SDG is, of course, very important, and I'm working for the promotion of the SDGs. But now we have 17 or 169 items of SDGs. And it seems like there are some specific items receiving attention in Japan, for example, environment. But if we consider uh, the comprehensiveness, then I think One Health is really the key word. And we can uh, pr work towards 2030 um, in promoting One Health. And if we always uh, compare anything with One Health, for instance, I can uh, be reminded that uh, what I'm doing at my town is really good. So Gihu Prefecture also uh, should set the banner, said One Health, yes, definitely. So I'd like to go back what I learned here in Hukuoka back to my town. Thank you very much for today. Dr. Imamura, well, uh, I'm, not, I, I'm not really in a position to really give closing remark, but uh, I think I have said everything earlier. And if I may add just a little bit, uh, recently um, in this pandemic situation, I often think that uh, One Health is environment, animals, and human health as one. And there is myself, and it's not just single uh, life. There are others around and also on the surface of my body and inside of my body. I'm living with lots of lives, for instance, microflora. And then I am an environment for the intestinal, uh, the bacteria, uh, the microflora. So outside and inside the, of the body, I am living with lots of other lives. So how can you really imagine all of those? And I need to also do that to communicate. To do that, I should keep working with uh, people from different fields, just like what we discussed today. Thank you very much. Well, um, Mr. Kanda said earlier on that we should be ahead of SDGs. That is exactly what I thought when I heard about uh, the One Health concept. I mean, we need to connect uh, the academic, uh, the study, and also our activity. Uh, we should expand our activities to outside of Fukuoka and onto the Asia and beyond. So the Mr. Shibata from One Health Creates, and Sento Tarui, NPO, Representative Director, Mr. Kanda, and also Executive Dir the Director uh, of uh, the Fukuoka Veterinary Medical Association, Dr. Imamura, thank you very much. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.